welcome back to my channel or if you're new hi hello my name is kenna i'm 25 and i live in philadelphia pennsylvania if you would like to join me on my journey in the city definitely like and subscribe turn on your notifications and let me know down in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see Today's video is going to be a what I eat in the day, so I wanted to take you through a very typical day of what I eat. I am counting macros, and so I use my fitness pal to track my protein, carb, and fat intake, and essentially my calorie intake each day. I try to do this at least five times a week, essentially Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, I'm a little bit more lax, but still mindful of what I'm eating. We all have our own relationship with food, and so with that being said, I am not going to include the macros and calories for each of my meals. If anything take this video as some meal ideas that are pretty balanced well-rounded meals in terms of having proteins fats and carbs in each of the meals so I have been tracking macros on and off for five years now maybe four and so in the past I've been a little bit more strict I've been more lenient you know we've all had our ups and downs with our relationship with food I am definitely still working on mine but for me tracking macros is just a way for me to be a bit more mindful about my portions and about how much nutrients I'm getting it really helps me make sure I'm getting enough protein if anything in my diet but with that being said I am not as militant with it as I used to be if you saw my last video I clearly still eat out and eat foods that I was not tracking that weekend you know if I have guests over I'm not gonna track if I go on vacation or something like that I'm not gonna spend the whole time tracking that just personally has not been good for me I've tried it in the past and I just don't really want to live my life like that but like I said for Monday through Friday when I'm following a pretty strict routine in terms of getting up for work going to the gym at the same time every day and things like that it's really easy for me to track my macros because it's easy for me to eat at the same times, eat the same things throughout the day. And so that's what I like to do. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So I will explain more with each meal as we get into it. I don't want this intro to be too long, but I did want to start out by saying that I try to drink at least six to eight of these a day. And I try to drink at least one or two before I drink my morning coffee. That way I can make sure I am getting enough water and that I'm not starting the day off right with caffeine. Personally for me, that makes my heart rate go insane get a little anxious and we don't want that and we want to make sure we're staying hydrated throughout the day too and not just like chugging eight of these at night before you go to bed because that's also just not going to feel that great on your stomach so i'm on my second one of these but i'm going to make my coffee to at least get it started so without further ado let's get into the video okay i've had two cups of my water and now i'm gonna have some coffee i do drink my coffee just black I just get the Maxwell House 100% Colombian medium roast. Some days I'll put almond milk or cinnamon or something like that in my coffee. If you've watched my Vlogmas videos, you've seen that I do try and play it up. Mostly around the holidays is when I feel inspired to add anything. But I genuinely do just like black coffee and this one is just so good. So I like the taste of coffee and especially that one. I can definitely appreciate sweeter coffee. I'm not like a coffee snob that... I just think if you don't drink black coffee that, you know, you're not a true coffee drinker. I personally just really enjoy black. For breakfast, I'm going to make two eggs, a grape tomato, a slice of cheese, and a slice of oven roasted turkey breast. And then on the side, I'm going to have a piece of the Trader Joe's Tuscan pan with some salted spreadable butter on top. And I'm going to top my omelet with hot sauce, of course. And then these are some of the seasonings I like to use. I put pepper and garlic salt in the eggs. And then after I butter my bread, I like to top it off with everything but the bagel seasoning. I am a salt addict. I know it's not good. I'm trying to not use as much, but I just can't help it. Love the flavor. Also, I forgot to mention, but I whisk my eggs in a little bit of almond milk. I remember when I was younger, I learned that you should add a little bit of milk to your scrambled eggs. It helps make them fluffier. And so I've always done that. I know almond milk is a little bit different, but it's just one of those rules that I learned and now just feel the need to always incorporate. And this might be weird. I like to put the pepper in before I start whisking the eggs. I like to whisk the pepper into the eggs, kind of. I don't know. I feel like it just is a little bit better than when I try and put it just on top of the omelet.
here we have the finished product. I added the butter and everything but the bagel seasoning to my toast. It did come out a little fast, so there's a little bit more than I intended. And then I added hot sauce on top of my omelet. I like to kind of pre-slice my omelet before I put the hot sauce on to hope that the hot sauce will get on like the inside of the omelet too. If you watch my Vlogmas videos, you've seen like what my breakfast really looks like when I go to eat it. I essentially cut everything up as if I'm feeding it to a toddler. For me, that just works the best because I like to take pieces of the omelet and put it on top of pieces of the toast. You know, just doing my own thing. It also helps me eat slower because I am notoriously a fast eater and that is just not the best for you. It can make you sick and it doesn't keep you full as long. So trying to slow down and just savor every bit of it. I also wanted to make a note that even though I am counting calories, counting macros, I wanted to show you that I am still eating bread, I'm still eating butter and cheese, and I'm still enjoying my food. I personally have realized that I need to have a breakfast that is more fat and protein heavy than carbs. So I know some people enjoy oatmeal or yogurt and fruit and granola. For me, that doesn't keep me full as long as eggs and toast do. And so it's all about finding what works best for you. I know some people that can start the day off with a smoothie and be perfectly fine. For me, I prefer to eat my calories instead of drink them. I just love eating, essentially. And so a smoothie for me isn't really as satisfying and filling mentally or physically. So again, find what works for you. There are no good, bad breakfasts. The word healthy is a very subjective term in my opinion. And so if I do happen to say that throughout the video, my definition of healthy is nutrient dense, pretty balanced in terms of having protein, carbs, and fat sources, but most of all the nutrients and vitamins. So vegetables, in my opinion, are healthy. Fruits are healthy. Whole grains are healthy. Lean proteins are healthy. I want to make a note of that, especially at the beginning of this video. And I will show you throughout my foods how, again, I'm counting my macros, but I am not restricting and I am not going, you know, carb free, fat free, dairy free, or anything like that because I don't personally need that for any health reasons. And so I'm not going to do that solely for a weight loss type of reason. Okay, so it is about three o'clock now. I am going to make some lunch. I forgot to mention earlier that I had breakfast around 11 o'clock this morning. I try not to eat breakfast that late, but the morning just kind of got away from me. And so I was so hungry by the time I got to eat breakfast. And I feel like I'm still like running off that hunger. But I am working on trying to just listen to my body of when I'm hungry and not be so set on eating at certain times of the day. And so I guess in that sense, I'm kind of eating intuitively, but at the same time, I am still tracking my portions and the types of food I'm eating in macro counting. So for lunch every day, I feel like if you watch my hauls, I've mentioned this a lot, I have a kale salad with chicken and vegetables and chickpeas. And so let me show you what all goes into that and how I make it. So I have my kale as my base and then I have carrots, celery, and grape tomatoes. Now I'm going to add some chickpeas. They are a great source of carb and protein. And I just drained them as well before I poured them on the salad. So this has been a new addition to my salads. I got the spicy taco sauce from Trader Joe's and I've just been drizzling it a little bit on the chickpeas. And then of course it hits the other vegetables as well. But I think it just gives a good kind of spice and flavor to the salad. And next I'm going to add the grilled chicken breast. The grilled chicken breast is prepped. I made it a few days ago and I used the Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute on it and then a little bit of pepper. So once I have my chicken added, I'm going to take my kitchen shears. These are essential in my opinion when it comes to making salads or honestly anything in the kitchen. But I'm going to give everything kind of a final chop and then just use my shears again to kind of grab and mix everything before I add my dressing. That way I'm not just getting dressing on the top pieces, AKA the chicken. Now that we have it all chopped up, I'm going to add light ranch dressing. It just has a lower fat content than regular ranch dressing. And there we have it. I really like salads because not only are they quick and customizable, they are pretty inexpensive. I wanna also remind you in this video that eating healthy does not have to be expensive. 
I personally do not spend hundreds of dollars on groceries every week. I buy pretty inexpensive produce. Most of my groceries are produce, meats, and grains, and I feel like I found a really good way to do that kind in a budget-friendly type of way. So for example, celery and carrots are quite inexpensive when it comes to produce. They are usually less than a dollar for a whole pack or a couple bunches. The bag of kale I have is usually three to four dollars for an entire bag, and that bag will last me over a week. I know meat can sometimes get expensive, so maybe shop around for the best places for meat in your area. And then canned beans are usually really inexpensive as well. Again, anywhere from 70 cents to $1.20 per can. And that one can will make about three to four salads for me. You'll also notice with my dressings and sauces and spreads, I tend to get store brand. Personally, I'm not able to tell a difference with those certain things. There are of course things like hot sauce and other condiments or foods where I will get the name brand because I do think it is a little bit better and of course you want to go with what you like the flavor of the most but in most cases the store brand is just the same if not better honestly so just a little tip because I know when it comes to eating more vegetables and fruits a big thing is that they are too expensive and trust me I understand that I am balling on a budget always so I definitely do not want to be spending hundreds of dollars or getting anything like crazy specific or having to go to like a Whole Foods type of store to get my food I get all of this at Trader Joe's Target and Walmart so I'm going to get back to work and enjoy my salad and I'll see you guys for probably a snack <laughs> So I'm just finishing up with work now and then I have a gym appointment in about an hour and so I want to make sure I get something in my stomach to make sure I'm all energized and ready for my workout. I'm hitting legs today so I just want to feel my best for that. So normally in between lunch and the gym I like to have some sort of snack of course. I usually track for a protein bar or an apple with peanut butter or both depending on how hungry I am that day. Today I'm just in the mood for a protein bar and so I'm going to have a built bar. This is not sponsored. I know so so many people are getting sponsored by them. That's actually how I first heard about them. I used Molly Bailey's code and then the next time I don't think I was able to use her code again but one of my Chrome extensions found a code that was like essentially the same. So I got the mix box of 18 bars. It's about $25. The last one lasted me about a month or so and I'm essentially eating them like every day of the week so I think that was pretty good again $25 for 18 protein bars is honestly a steal I feel like if you buy protein or protein bars or anything like that you know how expensive it can get so this one is definitely a really good deal in my opinion if you saw my first vlog a couple of vlogs ago where I gave my first impression of the built bar I don't think it was a very good first impression I feel like I was not expecting the texture whatsoever. It's an extremely soft and chewy texture and I was expecting something more like other protein bars I've had like from Quest or Pure Protein or some of those brands where they have like the different layers and different pieces of stuff. This was definitely a more cakey marshmallow type of texture. However, I looked up some reviews online and a lot of people were saying to put them in the freezer or the fridge and so that's what I started doing and it helped kind of solidify it a bit. It's still pretty chewy but the flavors are honestly just so good and I really do like having the variety pack. And Built Bar honestly has the widest variety of protein bars that I've literally ever seen. They have everything from orange and apple almond crisp to salted caramel and mint brownie. I personally really like the Cherry Garcia one. It tastes exactly just like chocolate and cherry. And the outer chocolate layer of all of the bars is unreal. It just tastes like you're actually eating a chocolate bar, which is definitely what they're going for is for these protein bars to taste like candy bars. But today I'm going to have the coconut flavor. So it's essentially going to be like chocolate covered coconut. So really excited to dig into that. And then I'm going to head to the gym. All right, it is almost seven o'clock now. I am back from the gym. I had a pretty good workout actually. I did a leg workout from Sydney Cummings and then did 12, 3, 30. I've been doing that pretty much every day and then doing strength training like the other half of my workout. So got that in, that's always nice. And now it is time for dinner. I am definitely hungry and I'm gonna show you something that I kind of came up with, I think last week, and now I'm just obsessed with it. So let me show you. So for tonight's dinner, I'm going to have one of the maple apple chicken sausages from Trader Joe's. They are already 
cooked up. I'm pretty sure they're pre-cooked when you buy them at the store too, but I heated them up last weekend. If you've seen my Valentine's Day weekend vlog, you know why. And then I'm going to have two of these sweet potatoes. They're kind of like miniature in my opinion. I don't know. That's kind of a weird shaped one, but having two of those. And then I'm going to have some of this broccoli, cauliflower, and carrot mix. It's frozen. And so I'm going to need to start that first. I'm going to make these in the microwave and I'm going to throw these into the skillet to heat them up with the vegetables once they're pretty much cooked. So let's get started. I am very hungry. All right. Well, apparently I wasn't recording for the last minute or so, but I just sprayed my pan with my non-stick cooking spray and then put some of the frozen vegetables on. They are very frozen, so there's essentially just two big frozen blocks of the vegetable mix. So I'm gonna put that in for now and now we'll move on to the sweet potatoes. Cue my heinous looking cutting board. I definitely need to get a new one. First, I'm gonna wash the sweet potatoes. And I do cook the sweet potatoes in the microwave for about five minutes or so. I just really do not wanna to have to wait, you know, the 30, 40 minutes to put it in the oven. I'm just pre-cutting it as much as I can. That way I don't have to try and cut it too much once it's softened, cause then it kind of just like falls apart. And I wanna still try and keep the cube like shape. Did this go bad? Well, we'll figure it out. I'm gonna plop those on a plate. Don't roll off. While we're here on my cutting board, let's cut up the chicken sausage. Like I said, it's already pretty much cooked, so I'm just going to put it on the, this is not bright knife, whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it on the pan um, to heat it up. Wow, I could not have cut that any less straight, whatever. all the same in the end but also i feel like i cut these perfectly any other night and of course when i'm recording it lost that entire motor skill all right now those are in like their own little cubes i'm gonna wait for the vegetables to cook up a little bit more before i add them to the pan all right the vegetables are getting cooked up so i'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken sausage in since the vegetables were in such a frozen clump before, I really wasn't able to see how much it was going to make. And honestly, I would probably make a little more than this had they not been made, had they not been frozen into a clump. But now I'm just a little too impatient to wanna to wait for more to cook up. I am just gonna cut them up into cubes. I had pre-cut them, like I said, before I cooked them. Whoop. And so now I'm just kind of finishing off those cuts now that it's a little softer. So, I tried a piece of the sweet potato. It's definitely gone bad. My mouth's burning a little. It has a very bad foul taste in it. Um, yeah, so I threw that out. So I'm gonna make the other block of the frozen broccoli, cauliflower, and carrots because without that sweet potato, my carb intake would be way too low. And, you know, this just would not be enough Food. And so I'm going to make some more of those vegetables. So this is not going to be exactly the meal that I intended, but still going to be good nonetheless. Okay, and this is the finished product. Again, this is not the product I planned, but what are you going to do? I topped it with some Trader Joe's garlic salt. That doesn't want to focus, but you guys know what garlic salt is. So again, I did the maple apple chicken sausage and the frozen mixed vegetables. Let's dig in. And now it is time for the final meal, dessert if we wanna call it that. I'm going to make my favorite protein yogurt and top it with some blueberries and a little bit of peanut butter. So the protein yogurt just consists of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. Pretty much gonna be using the rest of what's left in this one. And then I'm gonna mix in some chocolate protein powder. I'm only gonna use about a quarter of a scoop. If you use too much, it doesn't mix in as well. I kind of discovered this, if you wanna call it that, in college. I mixed chocolate protein powder with Greek yogurt and then I would put strawberries in it and it would just literally taste kind of like a chocolate mousse. It gets a really nice texture and of course, the flavor is really good. And then I'm gonna to top it with some peanut butter. 
The rest I'll just keep on the spoon and mix as I eat. And then I'm gonna add in some blueberries. But there you have it. Protein yogurt with some peanut butter and fruit to end the night. And that will conclude my what I eat in a day for today. Like I said before, I do track my macros. I use it more of a way to make sure I'm getting enough protein and carb and fat throughout the day. And that way I can make sure I'm not eating too little in the beginning of the day. And then, you know, come dinner time, I'm starving and like overeat and stuff like that. So I want to make sure that I'm eating consistently throughout the day, that I'm eating enough protein, fat, and carb sources. And like I said, you don't need to count calories, you don't need to count macros, just focus on eating vegetables and fruit and lean proteins and whole grains. And that's really what is most important. Another thing I wanted to touch on is that although I'm counting macros, like I said, I'm not being as strict as I may have been a few years ago. And that is in the sense that if I wanna go out to eat or if I'm hungrier one day, I will feed my body and fuel it the way it needs to be. But then days like today, I honestly wasn't as hungry and so I didn't have like the apple or I didn't have the bigger dinner that I may have had another day that I was hungry. And so I'm not going to kind of force those calories just because that's what my macro calendar says for the day if I'm not hungry. Again, it's all about balance. It's all about listening to your body. And I know that's really hard to do when we're being told so many different things when it comes to dieting and healthy eating and what to eat to lose weight and whatever that even means, you know? But again, I cannot trust this enough. Just please, please focus the most on just what you're eating in the sense that you wanna make sure you're getting enough nutrients and fuel for your body. And I hope that I was able to show you today that you can still eat really good tasting food and you also can eat it on a budget. The salad I made for lunch was really inexpensive. Even breakfast, you know, with eggs and sliced cheese, those are really inexpensive. The dinner I made, the chicken sausage, is like $4 a pack for five links. And then frozen and canned vegetables are usually pretty inexpensive. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down below or message me on Instagram. I love talking about this. I have been tracking macros on and off for about five years now. And so I feel like I've gotten a lot of knowledge. I'm not a professional by any means. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist but I just mean that I've experienced a lot and I've learned the different kind of mental roller coasters that tracking can take you on. And I feel like I've come to a place where while I'm still working on my relationship with food every single day, I can definitely have a more open discussion with people and try and help them steer clear of the bad habits that I may have had in the past. And I just really, really want people to understand that it doesn't need to be your entire life. You don't need to go through your entire day thinking about your next meal or what you just ate or explaining why you're eating something, please, please never feel the need to explain why you're eating something or eating a certain amount. You're a human, you eat food. That's all there is to it. It's really not that complicated and I hope that nobody or nothing ever makes you feel bad about what you're eating or how much you're eating. If you want to see more videos like this, more realistic what I eat in a days, I would love to share them. So definitely let me know your feedback down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.